right at the moment of this recording, Chinese World Chess Championship challenger Ding Lurin is sitting at the board playing the Russian Jan Nepomnichi for the World Chess Champion. And he does not know that potentially all of his opening preparation has been leaked and is publicly available. That means that Jan Nepomniachi may know exactly every opening line that Ding Loren and his team of seconds has prepared. This is absolutely huge news. This is 100% unprecedented in World Chess Championship history, and it may very well decide the match. Let me explain to you what I am talking about. This is the position from today's game that they are still playing. This uh, on here we see Ding with the white pieces. This is the last known so-called theory position. That means that this is a known position. It has been seen. It has been played by grandmasters before. But in this position, Ding Lorin plays rook to a two, which is a completely new move, never ever seen before in any recorded chess game that we have, except for this one. Here you see that exact same position, but on leechess.org, which is a, a open source um, free chess server, where the account FVITELI with white is playing O-P-S-Q-R-S-T-U-V, which is just no letters from the alf alphabet, uh, in, in order even, so it's, it's very clearly just a, a random name. This game was played months ago uh, with these two anonymous accounts, and of course it is uh, not completely uh, impossible that somebody played this known opening line and then uh, somebody random came up with the move Rook to A2, but here is where it gets crazy, crazy, crazy. So let me show you how the game Let's go back to this board and let me show you how the game betwi between Ding Lirin with the white pieces and Jan de Pomnichi developed from this point. And remember, they are still, as of this moment, still playing. So Ding Lirin does not know that this information has is now public and may already be known to Jan de Pomniachi. So Jan played pawn to b6. We saw pawn to e4 from Ding Lirin. We then saw bishop out to a6, targeting this pawn, defended by this bishop, and we saw bishop out to g5, pinning this knight to the queen. Okay. Here, Jan kicked the bishop with pawn to h6, but rather than moving the bishop, Ding Loren played the ultra-sharp and very convincing move, pawn to h4. And I have just seen the latest couple of moves from the game. All of this we see here is also in the leeches game. Let me show you. Okay, so here we are from rook a2 and we see all the same moves. b6, e4, bishop out, bishop out, bishop is kicked and bishop is protected by h4. Now, in this rapid game that these two accounts played on leeches, Black tried rook to e8, which is an inaccuracy, and that is not what Jan Nepomniachi played. He played the much stronger pawn takes bishop, pawn takes bishop, and the very interesting follow-up, not moving the knight, but g6, allowing pawn takes knight, Queen takes pawn, extremely sharp. It knows, it looks like Ding, uh, it looks like Jan de Pomniachi knows exactly what he is doing. Uh, how likely is it that these two random people uh, with these two random accounts who only played each other and have uh, extremely low ratings compared to Ding Lirin or Richard Rapport or, or whoever his seconds would be, they have ratings of 1500. So how, li so how likely is it that two 1500 players on leeches would play this exact same thing. 
very unlikely. Then you add that these two players only ever played each other on Lee Chess, and you uh, add that one of them has a non-rapid rating on Lee Chess well above 2700. It is possible that this is not Ding's preparation if it were not for this next fact. Let's go back to the physical board. Okay, here we are, but let's change the position here. Let's go to this position. In this position, Ding Liren had the white pieces in game two. So we are currently at game eight in the World Chess Championship, and this is game two, and this is just extremely standard opening. We've seen this a million times before, but in this position, Ding Liren played a novelty, a move that has never been seen before in the Masters database. He played pawn to h3 here, and actually ended up losing the game with white against a brilliant attack by Jan Nepomniachi. Let's take a look at Leeches. Okay, here we have a game with the exact same position, again between these same two players, and guess what White played in this position? Pawn to h3. That leaves, in my mind, absolutely no doubt at all that these are training accounts by Dinglerin and his seconds and we can see a bunch of games that they have played all extremely accurate and all fitting Dinglerin's style okay we have a new huge development this is absolutely crazy a reddit user by the name of Ludwig de Large is also following this case. I guess everybody will be talking about this very, very soon. And he, she, or they has uh, found out some stuff by the, uh, for instance, that the FVI Tele also has a chess.com, so which is different from Leech's uh, account, and that they just renamed their account into GGY Not. This literally just happened. If we go over to their account, we can see that they claim to be from Italy and they are only playing against a banned player from China. All their games is against this person. And when did they play their last game? On February 12th. The first games between the uh, the first rapid games we see we saw on leeches they were played on february 13th let's take a more deep dive here let's let's take a look you can see the accuracy here which is how well the players moves are matching up against the com chess computers moves and we can see they are extremely high 96 percent 95 percent uh, 88 97 percent uh, so you have to be either cheating using an engine or you have to be a super grandmaster like Ding Lorin to uh, get these numbers. The Chinese account was banned probably because they were either using an engine to check out the prep and they were not uh, aware that chess.com automatically bans you if they can detect that you are using an engine or which is more likely they were playing themselves but it is a guy like either Ding Lorin or Wang Hao, or one of his seconds from uh, China. And Chess.com looked and said, okay, you are not playing very much, you have a rating below 1000, and you are playing super grandmaster level chess. This is very suspicious, we ban your account. So what did they do? They went to Li Chess, uh, and they made accounts there instead. Ding Lirin is already a, a, a point behind in the match. He has been playing all these uh, very imaginative and very original openings. But if Jan's team has known for some time that this is his preparation, he is he's done. And it is over. And I will also say the way Jan reacted in, in the game when we saw, let me bring bring that up again, when we saw in this position right here, we saw Dinglerin play rook to a2, which is a new move and an extremely original move. 
uh, we saw Jan react quite fast and playing absolutely perfectly. So to me, it suggests that he is already aware of this league and that Jan is using specific preparation, not general preparation, but he has not he has not prepared against Dinglerin's style. He has not prepared against Lingerin, Dinglerin's usual openings. He has prepared against Dinglerin's preparation, which is an absolutely huge, huge advantage. Okay, so there has been a huge development. Again, this literally just happened. Jan Nepomniachi blundered, and the game may be completely over. White will maybe get a completely crushing position out of this. So we are in move 22. Dinglerin plays g5. Computer says this position is even, maybe a small edge to white. But Jan plays bishop takes knight. And that is the wrong way to approach this position because queen takes bishop. And here we see the follow-up, the faulty plane by Jan Nepomniachi, knight to f5, coordinating an attack with the knight and the queen on this pawn, which on which uh, Dinglerin has put all his hopes and dreams that this shall become a queen. But calmly, Dinglerin plays rook to d2, protecting the pawn. There is only one defender, but look at this. Two attackers, but this pawn is unprotected. So if we see knight takes pawn, we can see queen takes pawn here with check and winning the game. Now, rook to h8 by Jan de Pomniacci. Also not a good move. Rook takes rook. Queen takes rook. And you could say, why not uh, queen takes pawn here? And that's actually something we need to explain in order to understand the next couple of moves. Uh, white is a pawn down, so it will just restore material balance. And the problem is that after the king goes back, the queen is attacked. You can either trade, then the position is just completely equal, equal, or maybe this pawn will become a liability and black will be better. And if you just move out of the way, this pawn hangs to the queen here. And you cannot, for instance, go here to protect it because the knight is good. Okay. And here Dinglerin played pawn to d7 and threw away a big bunch of his advantage. His computer said it was completely crushing, plus 6, plus 7 at this point. After pawn to d7, it is still a very good position, but it's only plus 2. Because the pawn can kind of be stopped and black has chances here. What was the correct plane? The correct plane had to do about this pawn here on e5. Rook to d3 would have been the crushing move. Computer says rook to d8. Trying to stop the pawn is the only way to go for white. But here he comes. Rook to h3, attacking the queen. The queen has to move and look at this. Now you capture the pawn. Now it's good. Now you capture the pawn with check and you actually have to block like this and it falls apart. You can capture here. You can capture here, everything falls apart. Why? Because now when you go back with the king, this or this would be checkmate. That is what Ding Lorin missed. And that is why he played pawn to d7 instead. I will go back to the game. I will try to keep you updated. This world championship is just how amazing and unbelievable and dramatic is it. Cut to the next amazing moment, I guess. Okay, this may be too intense for me. Ding has now tried to push this pawn all the way. We are in move 31. And Jan Nepomniachi, he is under pressure. Ding has a good significant advantage here. This pawn is very, very dangerous. And he uh, Jan Nepomniachi does something that is way too desperate. He plays queen to h4. And this is completely, completely losing. What is the point? The point is that he wants to threaten a perpetual check. So he is bluffing right now because this move leaves the rook undefended. And all Ding has to do here is to play queen take rook because this 
perpetual check idea. Look what happens. Queen check. Rook blocks. Queen check. King e2. Queen a2 check. And now you bravely go king d3. King d3. So that queen b1 check can be made by rook to c, uh, rook to c2 allowing queen takes bishop with check king back to d2 queen takes f2 check and the king just goes to c1 and it will go after a check to b2 where uh, there are no more checks and it is completely safe it is, has been like built a new castle for itself and this pawn is very very soon going to become a queen we're going to see check here the king will move and then we're going to see this pawn becoming a queen that is the plan and it is unstoppable but ding did not capture the rook let's see if i can remember where all these pieces are supposed to in this position in order to avoid what he thought would become a perpetual check because he just couldn't calculate under the extreme pressure this insane line i just showed where you sacrifice the bishop sacrifice the pawn survive, survive a million checks but you hide your king on end up hiding your king on b2 he couldn't calculate all of that so he played king to d1 which is a critical mistake allowing queen takes g5 and why is that so important that is important because that queen covers the rook so now there's no queen takes rook and all of things crushing advantage has evaporated the complete the the, the situation is completely equal now i will go back to the game and bring you the next development thank you for watching along of course yes here we are again with a new development uh, it's it's pretty crazy how the these players uh, usually play so precise and so accurately and in this particular game uh, they are there are just so many dramatic swings that we are not used to seeing so i'll just take you briefly through the game here uh, after uh, the blunder uh, king d1 believing Jan de Pomniacci's bluff, believing that there was a perpetual check, he should just have taken the rook. Now we see queen takes, so the rook here is defended. Okay, king goes up, queen goes down. The bishop improves itself to the long diagonal, and now Jan plays a blunder. Again, he plays e5. Why is this not so good? Because king plays bishop to e Four, attacking the knight. So the knight has to move, otherwise, um, let's just say that, um, let's just uh, show something uh, that if we are allowed to capture uh, the knight here and recaptures uh, this, we, we can win the pawn here and we still have uh, this going on and there's no counterplay at all. Black will forever be tied down to uh, this pawn and position is completely hopeless so Jan cannot allow this knight to be taken in this way but what if he goes for a different plane so the knight goes back the position is now again winning for Ding Luren. he captures the pawn that is the correct idea and we are just saying okay we have this we have this and this knight is offside Jan plays another desperate idea knight to g4 and here Ding has to play this move. Protect the pawn, take it easy. He plays a different idea. Bishop to f3. And he blunders the win away because Jan has an extremely nice idea here, a positional sacrifice. He sacrifices the knight gives up the knight for a single pawn, but what can he do now? He can play pawn to e4, protected by the queen. So either the bishop has to move, or as Dinglerin does, rook to e2, so now there is no pawn takes because rook takes, but watch this, 
pawn to f5, and all of a sudden this bishop is a horrendous piece. These pawns are so strong, blocking out the bishop, and the position is completely 100% even this bishop now has no way to get into the square it wants to be to. It wants to be on C, uh, C6 C or on B5 to protect this pawn so we can free up the queen to harvest more pawns and eventually, and eventually gain one winning advantage or the other. But in order for this to have worked, in this position, we needed we needed to see bishop c6 immediately because Dinglerin missed this, frankly, very very interesting idea of sacrificing the knight to gaining for gaining these pawns. I will be I will be back soon with, I guess, more amazing developments. I guess like I feel that Dinglerin Dinglerin will maybe even win this game. Like it's it's frankly unbelievable. The rest of the game, this is the craziest game I have may maybe I've ever seen in World Chess Championship history. So this is where we left off. We see Queen takes, waiting a pawn, but of course Rook takes right back, and this is just equal, equal, equal city. Uh, I will go over it now. We are threatening. Jan is threatening uh, something along this uh, file. So we could come either here or here. Obviously, we cannot come to the only square that's protected by the rook, OK? Uh, so that forces a queen trade. And then uh, Dingleren actually gives back the bishop in order to reach this completely dead drawn position. We can see that he has three pawns to uh, black's two pawns, but his extra pawn is doubled, so they both have an isolated and blocked pawn here. And then they both ha have an outside passed pawn. So it's just completely equal situa situation here. And actually, already here, the situation they agreed. They agreed a draw. So this unbelievable game ended in a draw. Thank you for watching. If you'll excuse me, I have to edit this and, and get somewhere where I have an internet connection, actually, so I can upload it. Thank you for watching. Bye.